It's a program rich in tradition, where expectations run high. This year was supposed to be the exception. With Kristen Dockery and Jordan Barnes lost for the season, the Golden Gophers appeared to be in a rebuilding phase. That wasn't the case. This was a young team, but also gifted, determined, and playing a true team style. Efficient on offense, tenacious on defense, and tireless on the boards, these Golden Gophers delivered an exciting brand of basketball. Our expectations were very high coming into the season. I don't think a lot, the expectations were very high from people from the outside. I think there was a difference between the expectations of ourselves and the expectations that um, other people had for us. We expected to uh, contend for a Big Ten Championship and to make it to the NCAA Tournament. Let's make sure that we are the more aggressive and the more attacking team on both ends. As they marched triumphantly towards March, they set their sights on the NCAA Tournament. In the end, it was another 20-win season and a chance to dance at the big ball. This was a team that beat the odds and did so with hustle and heart. 2007-2008 was a prime example of why this already prominent program continues to get stronger. Individually, the Gophers were led by captains Leslie Knight and Emily Fox. Leslie and Emmy, they were just leaders by example. They were very consistent uh, basketball players on the court. Fox was among the Big Ten leaders in points, assists, and steals. With her energy, court vision, and high basketball IQ, Emily was a perfect go-to player, leading the Gophers in scoring with over 17 points per game and finishing the season as a first-team all-conference selection. Only a junior, Fox already put her stamp in the record book by netting her 1,000th career point in a win over Michigan. In her final season, Leslie Knight was dominant in the paint. Leslie ranked near the top of the league in both rebounds and field goal percentage and was named to the all-conference second team. Fox and Knight were the leaders, but they were supported by one of the most talented sophomore classes in the country. Ashley Ellis Milan is quickly becoming a premier post presence. At 6'2", Ellis Milan is a great low post defender and was one of the Big Ten's top rebounders. Ashley was named honorable mention all Big Ten. Corinne Campbell may be the team's most athletic player. She's an aggressive defender, a slasher on offense, and a player that crashes the board. Campbell, Knight, and Ellis Milan all averaged over two offensive rebounds per game and were the reason the Gophers were one of the best in the country in that department. The backcourt featured a pair of second-year players. Katie Ohm has a scorer's mentality and was one of the conference's best long-range threats. Brittany McCoy was a defensive stopper and a consistent playmaker. McCoy dished out over four assists per game, second on the team behind Fox, and third best in the Big Ten. The Gophers were individually great, collectively divine. As a group, those were skills equaled with will. Our entire focus today should be defense and rebounding. We're an up-tempo, high-energy, fast-paced basketball team. You know, we're known to be a, a very physical basketball team on the floor. Good job! Pressure defense, aggressive rebounding, and a balanced offense were their trademarks. This was evident early on. In the opener, four players scored in double figures as the maroon and gold defeated NCAA tournament-bound UC Riverside. They then grabbed 16 offensive rebounds in a road win at Northern Iowa. In mid-November, Williams Arena was home to the Subway Basketball Classic. After beating Western Carolina in the opener, the Gophers were matched with Louisville, one of the country's top teams. The Gophers were in for a battle, trailing by 12 with just over seven minutes to go, when McCoy and Fox hit threes to bring them back. 
In the end, the Gophers pulled off the upset. Fox held the MVP trophy, and Ashley Ellis Milan was named to the all-tournament team. The Louisville win was awesome. I think that was uh, the first time that we proved to ourselves and to other people that we can play with some of the best teams in the country. A Thanksgiving trip to Hawaii brought two more Gopher wins and a perfect game for Katie Ohm. Facing Kentucky, Ohm went 5-for-5 five five from behind the arc and 6-for-6 six six from the floor as the Gophers scored a season-high 92 points. In their final Big Ten tune-up, the Gophers defeated a tough Iowa State team. led the way with 20 points, Knight added 19, and the Gophers finished the non-conference season 9-3. and three. I think that gave us momentum and confidence going into uh, the Big Ten season, so that was a great win for us. I think that win and the Louisville win gave us a lot of confidence knowing that we had a great basketball team and we were ready for Big Ten play. The preseason prognosticators picked the Gophers to finish near the bottom of the Big Ten, but they would be proven wrong. It was clear early on this would be a top team. In the Big Ten opener, Minnesota crashed the boards. Knight pulled down 11, Campbell 10, and with four players scoring in double figures, the Gophers beat a very good Michigan State team in East Lansing. Leslie to the ball screen and then four rolls right down the middle of the lane. That's your rotation over. In their Big Ten home opener, their dynamic defense forced Purdue into 22 turnovers. I can feel it Knight poured in 20 points and grabbed 16 boards as the Gophers were off to a 2-0 conference start. Both great wins for us. They gave us a lot of confidence to start off the Big Ten season with. Just the confidence that it gave us to go into the Big Ten play. That hey, we have a chance to win the Big Ten this year. And uh, we got started off on the right foot. It is the border battle tonight and Minnesota in Madison to take on the Wisconsin Badgers. A week later, it was on the road to Wisconsin. Sorry, Bucky, but Minnesota nice does not pertain to the border battle. I can feel it. On pass, thread it to the boy, who lays it up. Fox with the feed. In this matchup, the Gophers were superb. The they got to the line 35 times and shot 54% from the field. Big, nice move and finish it. I can feel it. Pass right to Fox, who stepped in the lane. She has the boy with her, gives it up, and it's Brittany who finishes. In the second half, Fox was dominant, scoring 24 of her 29 points, including a string of nine straight. Catch and shoot. Unreal Emily Fox. Knight played the entire game, scoring 20 points, grabbing seven rebounds and six steals. The defense continued to impress as the maroon and gold held the Badgers to just 35% shooting from the field. The Gophers' fast start continued against Penn State, with Ellis Milan scoring a career-high 22 points. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. And I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Oh, Lord. Late January brought a two-game homestand to the barn. First up, a showdown with first place Ohio State. <laughs> Leslie Knight started the game on fire, pouring in a career-high 33 points. With the score tied at 50 midway through the second half, McCoy drained a three, and the Gophers had a lead they would never lose. The win over the Buckeyes pulled them right into the thick of the conference race. 
Two days later, another barn burner. On homecoming weekend, nearly 10,000 people packed Williams Arena as Minnesota faced Michigan State. The Gophers jumped out to an early lead and never looked back. Fox scored 29, Ohm 17, and Minnesota has a season sweep of the Spartans. I mean, that whole week, that was probably our best week of basketball. You know, thinking back on it, like, if we wouldn't have won one of those games, we wouldn't have gotten our 20 wins um, to get into the NCAA tournament. So winning those two home games was huge. Williams Arena is one of the most historic courts in all of college basketball. Rich in tradition, an elevated floor, and a raucous crowd. It's home to the Gophers in a place where they are nearly unbeatable. In February, they continued to dominate at home, highlighted by back-to-back -back wins over Illinois and Northwestern. The history of Penn State, we've never won there. You know, it's always a hard place to go in and play because they play so well when they're at home. On this night, that would change. This was a game the maroon and gold would dominate. They jumped out to an early 10-point lead, built it to 20, and route to a Valentine's victory. Going in and getting the win this season was huge, um, especially to get that win for Coach Borton because she had never won there. I think that was a great accomplishment for this team this year to uh, kind of regain that uh, sense of confidence for even for years to come. Just get out there and have fun and play. Okay, this is the last game that we're playing here at home tonight and you guys need to go out here and have fun. Was everything I've ever done I give it all to everyone for one more day. The Gophers' last home game was a chance to honor the senior class. Well, I thought our senior class, they all brought a lot of different things, and, and Lindsey Jade was, uh, was with us for four years, too, as a manager, and, and too, as uh, being on the team as a player, and I thought her loyalty and her commitment to this program and everything that she, that she brought to this team was uh, very invaluable, and I, and I hope that she had a great experience uh, just experiencing all aspects of the program. Jordan, uh, we, we had the pleasure of having her part of this program for the last two years, and and uh, with her work ethic and her maturity, um, you know she's going to be missed next year as well. Leslie Knight was uh, she's a, a special story. She's a special player, not just as a basketball player, but as a person, as a student, as a basketball player. And I think everybody would love to have a daughter like Leslie. On senior night, it was a senior that did the damage. Leslie Knight notched her third career double double with 19 points and 10 rebounds as the Gophers knocked off Indiana. The win helped secure a postseason berth and was a milestone for Pam Borton, her 200th career win. Great win! You know, it's just kind of a relief afterwards. You're just kind of like, I'm just glad that that went well. I'm glad I have a positive memory about it. The past two years, I definitely don't regret coming and playing at all, even though I've been hurt a lot. Um, it was an honor to be here and meet such fabulous girls and such a fabulous and great coaching staff. I've enjoyed every day that I've been here on campus. Um, I don't regret my decision to come here at all. And I just have so many memories. I feel like this is kind of my home. And when I graduate as an alumni, I definitely see myself coming back here and sticking around and coming into the basketball offices and checking up on the team on Gopher Sports. The Gophers finished 11-7 and in the Big Ten with five of those losses by three or fewer points. And I think it was just exciting to get this team back into the NCAA tournament this year and give them a taste of what it's really like and then eventually next year, the year after, being able to take this team even further than that. The fact that the Gophers lost to Texas in the opening round of the NCAA tournament is a mere footnote in this remarkable season. Good job!
Pam Borton has continued to develop a program built on excellence. And the maroon and gold were again one of the country's elite. I'm waking up at the start of the end of the world, but it's feeling just like every other morning before. Now I wonder what my life is going to mean if it's gone. The cars are moving like a half a mile an hour and I started staring at the passengers and waving goodbye. Can you tell me what was ever really special about me all this time? But I 